Hi everyone! So you may have seen this guy on your FYP dishing out medical advice. Today, we have a very special guest, Dr. Obvious. Hello! And he's here to give us some behind the scenes about how it is like being a famous TikToker. Just kidding, about being a doctor in Singapore. So firstly, could you tell us what you do for a living? What's a typical day like in the day of Dr. Obvious? Okay, so uh, I'm a doctor by profession. I'm a family physician in Singapore. So I mainly work in nursing homes and I also work in the A&E. So a typical day for me would be working, working and working. Yeah. Uh, so I do quite a lot of overnight shifts. So I, my wife is not very happy about me not sleeping enough. Uh, but yeah, my, my day really just consists of me seeing a lot of patients, explaining to them their medical conditions, trying to treat whatever I can, and then going home to rest after that. Yeah, and Dr. Obvious is my side hustle kind of thing that is non, not for profit. Uh, that I, I have this Instagram and TikTok account which dishes out medical advice, mainly preventive health kind of advice for people so that they actually don't have to go and see a doctor or, or, or yeah, they don't have to see a doctor to get advice. Lah. So maybe what is one thing that Singaporeans do that makes you shake your head as a doctor and the reason why you started Doctor Obvious? Okay, so I, I would think that medical knowledge or medical education in Singapore is actually not that strong in a sense that I think a lot of um, Singaporeans have a lot of misconceptions about certain health concepts. So for example, uh, antibiotic overuse, a lot of patients come in to my clinic with flu symptoms and just for one or two days and they request for antibiotics, which is in general the wrong thing to do. Yeah, most upper respiratory tract infections are caused by viruses and antibiotics are not useful. Yeah. Other than that, sometimes um, I would see people coming in for uh, as in misuse of uh, emergency services. So because I work in the a and &E, right? Um, I do see people coming in with non-emergency kind of uh, medical conditions uh, where they actually could get better help in a GP clinic or, or, or somewhere else except uh, and leave the, the emergency for people with real emergencies. I see. I see that's how you, come up, you came up with this, Monica. So perhaps let's delve deeper into how you chose this path to become Dr. Obvious. So at what age did you decide that you wanted to be a doctor? So growing up, I think I have always wanted to be, uh, maybe because of parents' influence or maybe because I am really quite into science and biology. I thought medicine does um, fuse these expectations and my interests uh, uh, quite well together. So that has always been my first choice ever since maybe primary school, secondary school. But once I went I got into JC, I think my mind um, wavered a little bit in a sense that uh, uh, I started doing economics in, in, as a H2 subject in JC and I, grew, I fell in love with economics. So at the end of JC, I was actually planning to go to the UK to do a degree in economics. But the only scholarship that I could get was a teaching scholarship. Uh, and I don't think I'm really that fit to be a teacher. So uh, I also applied for medicine at the same time. Uh, and thank God I got in. So that kind of solidified my path until now. Do you have any regrets in pursuing this path thus far? Uh, actually, I have no regrets. The more I do it, the more I like it. So I'm really enjoying my, my, my work right now. That's amazing. Uh, so, can, can I ask, are the stereotypes of being a doctor true? So, for example, having good pay, long hours, um, being extremely intelligent. Yeah, like, are those, are those stereotypes true? Or perhaps, like, do you have to work over 80 hours as a junior doctor? Okay, so I think junior doctors now have it a lot better than our parents' generation. I think junior doctors now, they have their work hours regulated and all that. Yes, we do still have to do overnights at times. Um, maybe about, I think once, once to uh, one or two times a week, roughly. Uh, but 
I think it had the, the conditions have Im- improved tremendously since even my time. So now I think um, junior doctors can go post call punctually at 8 a.m. Meaning they, they work a whole night and then the next the next morning they can go home quite punctually at 8 a.m. But during my time actually sometimes we might need to drag on t- uh, to finish the work at around 12 p.m. or so. But now because it's getting more and more regulated, I think the life of junior doctors are much better. Yeah. Um, and the other stereotypes that you spoke about is whether doctors are all highly intelligent, I guess. Um, like kind personality. Not all, not all. Um, I guess when you start working as a junior doctor because of workload and all that kind of thing, maybe most of us start out with the best intentions, but sometimes the lack of sleep, tiredness and all that get, gets the better of us. And then you, you do see some people not, be, not being able to maintain that, that, that kind dismeanor and all that. And sometimes they can come across a, a, a bit abrasive. Yeah, uh, there's always this stereotypical um, um, persona of a surgeon, very curt, very abrasive, uh, 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 and rushing here and rushing there with very poor temper and all that. Honestly, some of them are like that. Honestly, some of them are like that. So uh, uh, I would say that medicine houses a lot of different kind of personalities, yeah. But of course, uh, uh, y- y- yeah, you you probably need a certain level of intelligence to be a doctor. But if you're talking about the really really smart people, um, I think most of them are not in the profession. <laughs> okay, then what about um the pay wise? Do you think it's worth the long hours that you put in? Okay, so I think the pay wise again. I think the current day. Uh, uh, house officers or the junior medical officers have pretty all right pay. I would say that if you compare them to private practice, they are nowhere near. But I guess as a trainee, um, traineeship years and all that, it is sufficient. Uh, sometimes people calculate the per hour kind of pay. Like during my time, uh, the per hour pay, because we work so long hours, sometimes it can be less than quote unquote McDonald's. Uh, but I think now with the better regulation of hours, better conditions, I think the pay is pretty all right. It's not the best. Okay, if you are going for money, medicine is not the right profession. Uh, but I guess it is sufficient enough to maintain the passion. Yeah, that's um, that's really good to hear because um, there was a CNA documentary about you know junior doctors having to work over eighty hours. So I'm glad to hear that perhaps there's better regulation now. Um, and better lo- uh, enforcement of the rules um, yeah, about the working hours. So, do you know anyone or have you seen anyone who entered med school for the wrong reasons? Uh, I mean, definitely there will be. Definitely there will be. Because uh, some people are enter med school more for, for example, um, money and status and all that. Yeah, but I would say that if they want to survive the first few years of traineeship in the public hospitals and all that, they really have to look past all this um, money and status because there really isn't <laughs> those things. Only once you become a very senior doctor, you have your own private clinic or you go into like private practice, that's, that's when the money comes and it's really after about 10, 20 years of, of, of hard work. Lah. Thank you for sharing. Um... So what's the reality of med school like? Perhaps things that they don't advertise in the university brochure. Was it non-stop studying? Do you get to hang out with your friends or pursue hobbies? Okay. Actually, if you talk about med school, it's probably my, the, the favourite part of my life. Okay. Actually, med school is not so stressful like a lot of people make out to be. Um, I find myself even more stressed in JC. Uh, in, <laughs> this is unpopular opinion, but during my time in med school, we always had this thing going around us, in, uh, around us, a pass equals to MBBS. So if we are able to pass the exam, we become doctors, which is very different from other faculties who have to fight for GPA, fight for the bell curve and all that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, they have to get A, uh, but for us, a pass is a pass. Yeah, of course, there are people who do so well, they get distinction and all that, but to us, a pass means we get to become doctors. So that made, made my studying journey not so stressful. Yeah, I would say that the hardest part of med school is probably the first year and the last year. So first year is 
really a change environment, learning a whole new language altogether. Uh, you know, medical terms and all that are very, very hard to. There's a lot of road, road learning, a lot of memory. Yeah, last, uh, the last year, which is the fifth year of med school, is also very stressful because the, the, the final MBBS exam is looming. Uh, but other than that, in the middle, I had a lot of fun. It was also the period in time where I made some of the best friends I had in my life. And um, we went on many trips together overseas. Uh, we had a lot, of, a lot of time to play club club and all that. And yeah, I met my wife at a club <laughs> because of all of my medical school friends. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I, so I, I noticed that you mentioned like uh, your, uh, in the past, right, you're doing your, your time. Uh, could, could we just roughly know uh, roughly how many years ago was that? Or uh, when were you in med school? Yeah, I graduated six years ago. 2016. Okay, so not yeah, not too long ago. Not too long ago, and in these six years, they actually implemented a lot of reforms for junior doctors, which is very good. Ah, that's great. Um, what do you wish more students at 18 or 19 would know before they enter med school, or something perhaps you wished you knew before you entered? Okay, I would think that um, med school will come as a culture shock for a lot of people. Three, two, one. Why do doctors have to work so long hours? Shouldn't you practice what you preach? Bacteria got no clock one. Why can't I dig my ears? You get infection. Go and watch my video. Can I sleep with the phone at my bedside? Try not to. Why? Cause it's very bright. You cannot sleep properly. Mm -hmm.